want to show you my new favorite infusion of all time. And it kind of came out of when I had my restaurant in Malibu called Mon Lee. It was a 18 course tasting menu, 12 of liquid, six of food. One of the courses was a liquid Caesar salad. I think it was course number three. And it was a liquid Caesar salad. So I made this Parmesan vermouth and I made like a, um, a crouton vermouth and a romaine lettuce vermouth and it had all these elements. But together it all kind of worked and you really tasted the elements of a Caesar salad. But what I noticed is when afterwards, when I just had that Parmesan vermouth, I just tried like getting people to sip on that. And I would say it was like what I call a 50-50, right? 50% 50 of the people liked it or loved this, 50 of the people, they just didn't like it. It was too much cheese or it was just the texture or something about it. So I was at the farmer's market and I saw this manchego cheese. I was like, you know what? I'm going to try that in vermouth. You know, I did Parmesan. Let me, I didn't try this. Let me try this. Manchego, if you don't know it, it's a cheese that's from Spain. It's from the La Mancha region, which is just a little bit south from the center of Spain. Uh, it's made from sheep's milk and it's aged anywhere between 60 days and two years, okay? What I want to show you is this Manchego infused vermouth, which is one of my new favorite infusions, which is one of my favorite things to give to somebody like at the very end, like they've already gone through everything. They've had drinks or they've had cocktails and food and I just give them just like you would have, you know, like in France or a lot of Europeans like to have the cheese at the end, right? So we're going to take the Manchego. Now what I love about this is there's a lot of flavor in the rind. You know, the rind is the outside part of this, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we get some good chunks of this with the rind. Oh my God. So we're going to put that in there. Got some nice pieces with the rind. Now let's cut a nice piece without the rind, right? Mm. And we'll probably, I think I can fit all this in. So I'm going to stuff all this in just because I love this so much. Okay, so we'll put that there. And then we are going to use Dolan Blanc vermouth. This is one of my favorite vermouths. Uh, I keep saying favorite, but this is one of, I don't know how else to express it. It's just, it's a vermouth that is a great drinking vermouth. So it's a vermouth that easily you could drink on its own. Um, and it works so well with so many different infusions. So it becomes a really interesting vehicle for having little nips that are not that strong in alcohol. You know, vermouth is typically around 13, 14% alcohol. Uh, so it's a wonderful thing to serve at the end of a meal as well, especially if you've already had a bunch of drinks. Uh, and a Dolan Blanc is a halfway between a dry vermouth and a sweet vermouth. Um, Dolan actually makes a dry and a sweet. So it's not too sweet and it's not too dry. So what I'll do is I'll just fill this all the way at the top and cover it, right? Now, just like all of my infusions, this needs to sit about seven to 10 days. So you can put a little sticker on that, especially if you're traveling or you're busy. You can put a little marker like the date that you um, started it. And then just let that sit. But most importantly, because it is wine-based, mostly it has some spirit in it as, as well, is after you infuse this, you're gonna wanna refrigerate it. But this is, I'm going to show you an example. So this is kind of where it's at right now, right? So this is something that's been sitting and I just left it in there. I didn't, I didn't strain it out. It's um, an easy way of just keeping it going and I can pour from here, but I want you to see something that's really important. What happens is if I just had the vermouth in there, right? You get all kinds of solids in there. There's different, um, it, there's a different mouthfeel to it. Um, there's definitely an, or more of an oiliness to it. So one of the things you can do, and it's fantastic like this, but one of the easiest ways to improve upon kind of the experience of this is you do something that's called a fat wash, which is a very common bar technique now. Um, it was invented a long, long time ago. What you would do is after these seven or 10 days are up, you would strain out the cheese and then you would put this in the freezer just overnight. And what happens is, when that starts to freeze, right, the water is freezing, all of these solids and the, the, the texture part of it, of the cheese, starts to rise to the top. And what that does is all the oils and the solids and pieces um, starts to freeze. It almost looks like candle wax on the top. So like literally the next day when you see it, you're going to see the two different colors. You've got the vermouth and then you've got this like almost grayish white 
film on top. You, you scoop that right off. It's really, really simple, comes right off. But what's great about that, you still have all the flavor into the vermouth. You're still gonna taste the manchego. You're still gonna have the mouthfeel and the creaminess. It's just a lot cleaner experience. So that's my recommendation to you. Um, right now, like I said, if that's something that you, you wanna do, I, I can be like a Greek grandmother sometimes where I like keeping things in jars and I pour them from the jars. So that is a big part of what I do. But this is one of, gonna be one of the most sensational things I think you can serve somebody. But what I do is, you know, after I've served food or after I've served cocktails or they've had some snacks, it's usually the last thing I give them. I even give it to them after the dessert. So they'll have the dessert, maybe they have a coffee drink, whatever, and then I'll just give them this little nip of manchego vermouth. And um, to me, it's something that people would not expect. So have fun with it. Uh, again, if you don't have manchego, I'm sure you can access any kind of manchego online. And I highly, highly recommend using that first. But other cheeses work. Parmesan is great. But the manchego is really something that I feel like you can drink on its own. Cheers.